We're starting a new module today called Electrical Energy in the Home. Now in this module we're going to be looking at electricity, how it works, how it's drawn from batteries, how it's measured, uh, and that sort of thing. To begin with, we're going to be learning a little bit about how electricity is used uh, around the world today, which hopefully you already know a little bit about. So today, as we know, Electricity is used practically everywhere, and we often take it for granted. So we have very many uses for electricity, including heating with electric heaters, lighting with light bulbs and fluorescent bulbs, and these are in fact the two most common uses of electricity, as well as things like cooling, like for air conditioning or fans, uh, computing, or entertainment, things like that, and so on. Now, electricity has only really gained popularity in the last few hundred years, even though technically it's always been around. So prior to this, we didn't use electricity for everything, obviously. Instead, we used different energy sources. Our ancestors used things like coal or wood or wax in order to heat and light their houses. Wind and water have also been important power sources. Uh, examples of this are in water wheels or windmills. So the use of water wheels, in fact, dates back more than 3,000 years, which means that it's been used as a power source for much longer than electricity has. Uh, sailing ships use wind power, of course. The sails are able to capture some of the kinetic energy of the wind, which helps to drive them forwards. Now, in the early 20th century, around the time that this photograph was taken, there were no labour-saving devices in the home. Uh, of course, today we have many electrically powered uh, labour-saving objects. So it took a lot of energy to perform common tasks, things which now we simply do with electricity, with very little effort on our parts. For washing clothes, for example, uh, the water to wash the clothes with would need to be heated by wood fire and the clothes would need to be hand washed. Today, an electric appliance, the washing machine, can do all of this for us using only electricity and of course a bit of water. Uh, another thing that we take for granted today is food storage. The lack of refrigeration made food storage and preservation a very hard task before the days of electricity. In Australia, uh, things like the electric refrigerator did not become common until the late 1950s, which is quite a long time to wait, given that we're in such a hot continent. So what did we do before we had the fridge? Well, we did in fact have ways of storing and preserving food. Uh, so prior to the invention of the electric refrigerator, we used things like ice boxes, which are uh, boxes filled half with ice so that it cools down everything inside, or refrigerators powered by kerosene. So the availability uh, of energy for domestic purposes has roots in the Industrial Revolution. We can see an artist's illustration of uh, a day in the revolution over here. The Industrial Revolution was a time in the 1800s when steam-powered uh, devices were invented. And of course, uh, steam engines are able to extract uh, the energy in things like coal and oil in order to produce large amounts of energy. So the steam engine uh, appeared in about uh, 1712 and during the next few centuries uh, became increasingly popular. Uh, it was improved by James Watt about halfway through the 18th century and was used in very many applications. It could produce enormous amounts of kinetic energy, which is very useful for things like factories. So steam engines uh, were used industrially uh, well into the 20th century, that is the 1900s. We see a picture here of a steam-powered uh, car, as it were, a moving device. So the use of gas Another energy source for lighting and cooking began in the 19th century, which is the 1800s. This was used to do things like uh, light lamps or warm ovens. 
and around this time electricity was developed. And so the use of electricity allowed the transfer of all this uh, power and all this energy to various different places, even over long distances. And of course, today we know that uh, electric generators are located well outside of cities, and the electricity that they produce uh, is sent through power lines, often hundreds of kilometers long, uh, to the cities that require the electricity. This is certainly more useful than the energy produced by steam engines, which had to be used pretty much on site. Right, so that's the end of the theory. We've learned a bit about the history of energy sources in our society. Let's go on to some questions. Question one. What power source was used for indoor heating before electricity? Obviously, it wasn't the electric heater. Was it geothermal energy, animal body heat, sunlight, or fire? Well, the problem with sunlight is that uh, it can't be inside all the time, especially not at night. Animal body heat would be fine, I guess, if we were animals, but no, we're civilized people. Uh, geothermal energy still isn't uh, really properly utilized even in today's society, so our correct answer is going to be fire. The source of fire, though, uh, tended to vary. It might be a wood fire, or a coal fire, or an oil fire, or a gas fire, depending on which century you're living in. Question two. Which source of energy was not used before electricity? Water power, nuclear power, wind power, or solar power? Now, all of these power sources can be used to produce electricity, which we'll be learning about a little later on. But all of them have been used for different purposes before the invention of electricity. So let's go through our options. Water power was of course used to turn water wheels, which would do things like mill grain. Wind power was used for the same purpose in windmills and also used for things like sailing in order to uh, speed up the ships with the sails. So what's our last option then? Is it nuclear power or solar power? Well, both of them come from the energy of an atom, funnily enough, but we haven't been using nuclear power very long. We have, however, been using solar power, which is used to do things like light and heat houses during the day, of course as well as doing things like drying clothes. Nuclear power is the only source of energy that wasn't used before the invention of electricity. It was only discovered in 1896. In fact, by 1896, uh, electric generators had already been uh, developed and invented. Question three. Give an example of a task that is today performed with electricity, but was once performed by hand. Describe by the, uh, how the amounts of labor uh, involved in each task has changed. I'm sure that uh, you can already think of some sort of example. And of course, the amount of labor involved drastically goes down when electricity is involved. So here's an example that I've come up with. Sending messages long distance. Now, before the advent of electricity, if we wanted to send a message long distance, we needed a messenger from the post service. Uh, so these days, messages can be sent as electric signals through things like phones, fax machines, computers, or telegraphs. Telegraphs is, of course, a bit ancient by now, but it is still use of electricity. Electric signals are able to move down wires and they don't need to be carried by any messenger. Electric transmissions tend to be a lot faster, and they tend to cut down a lot of the labor involved, uh, because of course we don't need a messenger to run to and fro. Question four. List seven uses of electricity. At first seven seems like a lot, but it shouldn't really be too hard. Right, had enough time to think of all of them? Let's go. Uh, lighting is one of the most common uses, the other being heating. Right, fair enough, light, heat. Uh, other uses include locomotion, that is, movement, using electricity to power things like electric cars or trains. Entertainment, things like uh, music players, video players, uh, video cameras, for that matter, microphones. Cooling, 
They used to power fans and air conditioning. Computing, of course, is a very important use. Uh, and perhaps communication. We can send messages long distance using telephones or telegraphs or things like that. And that's seven. Question five. Outline the changes that have occurred in the main sources of domestic energy over time. All right, so we went through a list of these a little earlier. Let's see how many of them we can remember. Prehistoric humans uh, were able to use fire, which of course extracts the chemical energy stored in wood or other combustible objects. Uh, we were of course able to use the energy of an animals in order to help us out with farming and things like that. Uh, improved technology allowed us to harness the power of wind and water for things like milling grain or sailing. Right? Uh, finally, as we get closer and closer to the Industrial Revolution, we end up with, coal, uh, with power sources like coal, oil, and gas, which he, uh, burned, just like wood, in order to gain the chemical energy stored within. Uh, today, we use the same sources of energy in order to produce electricity, which can be transmitted long distance. Uh, beyond this, we can even use nuclear power to produce this sort of electricity. So that's the end of the questions. Uh, in this section, we've learned about the different sources of domestic energy over time, how they've evolved from things like uh, wood and wind and water to more advanced fossil fuels like coal, oil and gas. Mm -hmm.